life that the Lord gives to us. Let us go back to Ephesians chapter four and look at verse seventeen to f- chapter five, verse two. We will focus on three verses. Let us look at the word of God. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that's in them due to their. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about Him and were taught um, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, it's not working. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak the truth. Be Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down, and give no opportunity. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Our heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us your word. Please um, shine in our hearts, so that we will follow your word. We lift up this time, so that may my words and our meditations be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Verse twenty. She said, "This is not what you have learned from Christ, for you have heard him." And have stood firm in the faith. Therefore, take off the old flesh that is uh, corrupted, but by the Holy Spirit, transform your mind and your life to follow the image of Christ. Imagine that you are a, an athlete, George, and you play a basketball for um, a, a team in Germany. And you were called, invited to leave your team and uh, to come over here and play for the Miami Heat. And you are very proud that you have, uh, yeah, that you play for a uh, basketball team, especially with the very famous, uh, the best basketball players. And, and you know that there are differences in the rules and how you play the uh, FI. Uh, BA and the NBA are different, but you are still very. Uh, uh, you're not familiar with the NBA rules. But one of the differences is that in the FIBA, when the ball is out of the athlete's uh, uh, hands and goes to the to the rim. Uh, in uh, Europe, you can go ahead and take the ball away from the rim. But in the NBA, once the ball leaves the athlete's, uh, the basketball player's hands, then uh, you really cannot uh, take it away. Actually, on the path going up, you can take the ball away. But once it starts going down, you are not allowed to take away the basketball. And you know that, but even though you know there's a difference, but yet you are very familiar with the uh, uh, FIBA um, rules, especially when you are uh, so stressed in playing the game that uh, the ball goes up and you get so excited and anxious that you uh, take the ball away, and then you are uh, fouled. And then the second time you fouled again, and then third time, and the judge, the 
uh, coach come, takes you out and say, uh, George, remember that you're not no longer playing for the FIBA, but you are playing for the NBA, and which is the team that plays in America. You must follow the rules, uh, the new rules in the NBA and not the FIBA. But because uh, you, you say you're upset, you say, I played that from when I was little. I learned how to play that way, and that's how I play. But the coach said, George, George, you cannot say it that way. You have taken off the uh, rules and the, the life of the FIBA, and now you have come over here to play in the NBA. The NBA has new standards, and you need to ch change according to the new standards in your mind and thinking. You are no longer belonging to the FIBA, but you belong to the NBA in America. And so the Word of God in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24 says, You have um, put away the old person, and by the Holy Spirit you have uh, renewed your mind and been a new creation, one created in the image of God, in righteousness and holiness. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, on, there are three uh, infinitive verbs. There are three infinitive verbs, that is to take off, to be renewed, and to continue to be renewed. These three relate to how we are to uh, be with Christ and run with Christ. These three um, infinitive verbs uh, tells us how we are taught in Christ. This is what we have. These three uh, infinitive verbs are not three words of encouragement, but it, it is based on what we have learned from Jesus Christ. And not only that, but it is our context for how we learn from Christ, what we learn from Him and what we have been taught by Him in His life. And we learn from the ministry of Jesus Christ and we're taught in the truth of His, uh, of his truth to take away the old person and to be renewed in the mind and spirit and to put on a new body. By Jesus Christ, we have been taken away from us, put away the old person in Adam. The term to uh, take off in verse 22 and to put on in verse 24 is in a, a tense of the Greek or the Hebrews uh, that says that it talks about something that happens and there's no certain time. Usually the people who translate the Bible uses the uh, past tense to, to translate this, but it actually is in the middle of the two verbs. There is one verb, infinitive verb, that is something that it continues, the present, the present tense. And in the present tense, it talks about we are changed or transformed. And these three infinitive verbs um, talks about the three uh, that we have a new life in Christ. In Christ, we have been taken away from the old, um, the old nation, the old people, and now we are a new people in Christ, completely made new. That's the first thing that we see in the two verses, 20, verse 22 and 24. That is, we have been completely made new. In Christ, we have a new, uh, put off the old self and put on the new. That is, the one who follow Christ, have put on the new. We have been um, taken away from the old people, old generation, old mankind, when we repent our sins and come to Him. In verse 17, says how we are in the past. That is, we are in the old people. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. That is how we were in the past when we were in the old mankind, in the old person. Our minds were in darkness and we were ignorant from God. 
God. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Com that's not it. We do not learn that from Christ, assuming that you have heard about Him and were taught in Him as the truth in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful, and to be renewed in your mind, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. The Lord tells us to take off the old self. This old self is the old people, the old mankind in, in Adam. And this um, old mankind, as the days go by, they get worse and worse with morality and everything else because of deceitfulness, because they are greedy and because of their uh, sensual lust. Ephesians um, 4 describes these kind of people because they live in their ignorance. But now we talk about the new self, the new person created in Christ, created in righteousness and holiness. You have become a part of the new mankind, the new person, when we repent of our sins. Jesus has taken us Jesus has taken from the Jews and the Gentiles and united them as a new person in Christ. Everyone, the Vietnamese, the Americans, the Haitians, the Brazilians, are all the same on earth. And now they have been brought together in Jesus Christ to become a new creation, a new people in Christ. And we are given God uh, to the privilege to bear the image of God. In verse 22, to put on, verse 24, to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You and I are the church of God. The church is the holy people that belong to God. So we belong to the new generation, the new people. We are have been rescued from the old person and into the new mankind when we are united with Christ. And if you have not come to Lord Jesus Christ and welcome Him into your life, you have not repented of your sins and come to the Lord, I invite you this morning, today, to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and He will take you out of the new um, people, out of the old mankind and into the new creation, the new people. All the old will pass and whatever in this world will be taken away and we'll have a new uh, life. We will belong to that new creation and we will live with Christ forever. In Christ, we have put off our old self and put on the new. That is something that is something that is completely new, completely changed. There is no longer in the Bible it says, whoever is in Christ, he is created, uh, he is a new creation. All things are past, and behold, all things are new. We no longer belong to the old uh, generation, the old people, but we are the new in Christ. That is to be changed or transformed completely. But in verse 23, between in the midst of verse 22 and 24, it talks that we are continually made new as one who belongs to the new people, the new uh, person in Christ. We no longer live as people who live in the old, in Adam, but we are continually made new in Christ to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. When we translate um, the translators try to describe for us to understand. Um, Sometimes when we translate, it, it goes against what we want to really portray. In the Vietnamese version, in the Eng English version, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. So in English, it's more uh, accurate to the root meaning. That is, we are changed in the attitude or in of our our minds. 
the Spirit here is not talking about the Holy Spirit, uh, not that we are by the Holy Spirit changed. But no, this verse does not talk about the Holy Spirit as the Vietnamese version is, but it talks about our attitude, our spirit of our minds, our attitude of mind. And this transformation is not just in the mind, for in Christ we have a new mind. We have been given a new mind in Christ, but this is in the attitude or in the spirit of our minds. And so the word here is the present tense, which is continually, we are continually made new in Christ. We cannot change our own minds. We cannot change our the attitude of our minds either, but we need to be changed renewed in the death of our souls we are changed when we exalt the lord jesus christ i praise the lord for the meaning of the pastor d talking about worship worship is we exalt the worthiness of god and that has an effect and in an influence on our lives we become like Christ when we exalt Him and worship Him. People become like the idols they worship. The uh, young children, they have idols, people they follow, such as a uh, singing idol, such as Michael Jackson. And so uh, that kid will, in that his room, put up the picture of Michael Jackson, will have a glove like Michael Jackson, and talk like Michael Jackson. That is the idol of that, that child. Whatever people worship the idols, they become that idol. And when we worship God, we become like Him. Psalm 135, 15 to 18. The idols of uh, people that they create have, the, have ears that do not hear, uh, mouths that do not speak. In verse 18, and whoever makes that image and relies on those images will be like that image. That is, the idols have eyes that don't see, ears don't hear, um, a head that does not think. But we who uh, worship God, however God is, we will be like God. We worship Jesus Christ, one who is kind and loving, and we will be like Him. And we worship the righteous God, we will be like Him. We worship the holy God, we will be holy like Him. We worship the loving God, and we will be loving like Him. We have the attitude of Christ. And when we worship God, when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we receive and enjoy His love, and now we have that love to bring to other people. When we see that we are sinful and evil, and we come to the Lord, and He is willing to take on our, sir, our sins and forgive us of our sins, and we are so touched by such a great love of forgiveness, then we will forgive others. That is why Christ teaches us, forgive others as God has forgiven you in Christ. We worship God. We experience His greatness, and we will be like Him. When we come to the Lord and we say, oh, you are so Awesome God, you are the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. You are willing to humble yourselves to come to us humans and died on the cross. And when we exalt the Lord like that, we will also humble ourselves and submit ourselves as He has. When we worship God, we will be transformed to be like Him. We cannot change our the attitude of our spirit and our souls by ourselves. But when we worship God directly, we will be changed. In an interview, Dr. and missionary Lung Min Quoc Khan of the University of Southern California. They researched for 20 years and they discovered that he researched and saw that um, the people in California uh, had cancer and they were lacking um, the vitamin D3. And so they Discover, he discovered that people who have cancer need to have uh, a specific vitamin D that the doctors are able to only uh, only the doctors can give because a D3 vitamin can um, help destroy the cancer cells. And he gave a good news that is that you can have that D3 vitamin and you do not need. Uh, 
prescription from the doctor and that you do not need to spend money. And that is, you just rely on the natural D3 uh, that's under your skin. And when you go in the sunlight, there is the sunlight rays, ultraviolet rays of the sun. And that ultraviolet ray would transform the uh, whatever is underneath your skin that would transform uh, to become vitamin D3 naturally in your body to help your body to have um, what it takes to fight the cancer cells. And we cannot by ourselves create um, D3 if we do not go into the sunlight and have the ultraviolet rays on it. But we can have it when we go into the sunlight. The same way, we cannot transform ourselves. We cannot change our attitudes and the uh, personality within us. If you have a, a revengeance, a vengeance attitude or an angry attitude, uh, you cannot change yourself. You can't just say that to like that athlete, that's how I've been from the beginning and not change. No. But when we come to Jesus Christ, when we exalt Him and as uh, our God, then we will be transformed directly. Some people in conference talk about 47% of pastors. If 47% of pastors can do this, then of course the believers will also. 43% of pastors are addicted to pornography. How can they can change? How can they try to change? There's no way they can change. Why? Because when you are, are addicted to it, you are in it. You have forgotten God. You have you don't experience the presence of God. There's only way that you can escape. The only way that you can continually be renewed. That is when you worship God and ex and. Ex and acknowledge the presence of God with us. If you see that God is holy, then you will be transformed to be holy like Him. That is the only way we can be transformed. We are only renewed when we are renewed directly. And that's why we worship God. God knows that He, how great He is. He knows how amazing and awesome and good He is. He does not need us to worship Him, to speak up to and exalt Him, no. But He tells us to worship Him because it is a benefit to us, not to God. When we praise the Lord and we worship Him and we um, reverence Him, then we will be transformed to be like Him, to be transformed in the renewal of our minds, in the attitude of our minds. We will have the attitude of love, of hum humility, of righteousness and holiness when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and fellowship with Him. We receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but we also we need to receive Him as our life. He becomes our life. We are transformed by the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Word. There is no other way aside from the Holy Spirit and the Holy Word. The Holy Spirit reveals to us to understand the Word of God and to apply the Word of God in our lives. And what is the Word of God? The Holy Word. It, is, it explains to us or illustrates and explains to us who God is. In the Old Testament, God is concealed, but in the New Testament, God is revealed. When we come to the Bible, we see that the Word of God has nothing upon our lives if we are not, um, by the Holy Spirit, understand the Word of God. And when we see who Jesus Christ is, and we enjoy Him, and enjoy His love and His kindness, and everything that God has for us, then we um, worship Him, and we will be transformed in Him. When we relate to Jesus Christ through Holy Spirit and through His Holy Word, then we experience Him. That brings us to the point where we are so gratitude to the Lord and to serve Him and worship Him. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, our, the attitude of our minds will be renewed in Him. We are transformed, we are renewed in the attitude of our minds when we exalt the Lord Jesus Christ and worship Him. To worship God is not just to sing, sang, sing songs. Singing songs is not worshiping. We must sing from a grateful heart.
from a heart that experiences God. That is the response that we have to God. When we come to God and the Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us and we experience His love, His righteousness, everything about Him, we experience Jesus Christ, we experience His forgiveness, His uh, help, His uh, the saving grace, then we review it through our songs of singing to Him and also through our humbling ourselves to serve Him. So we need to apply this truth in our lives. How, How can we apply it? I believe that the whole book of Ephesians lies in these three verses. Not only the whole book of Ephesians, but other books in the Bible shows us that God has taken us from the old people into the new mankind, and now we are continually transformed to be renewed in Christ. All of the Bible helps us to understand this. This is the process that God has for us. And how do we apply this? The Word of God lets us see in verse 25. Therefore, I haven't put away falsehood. Let each of you speak the truth. Why? Because uh, falsehood belongs to old man and speaking the truth to the new man. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Why? Why is it that we are not to sin when we are angry? Because angry is so, anger is an emotion that God gives to us. And in the old person, when we are angry, we, we sin and we hurt other people. But in the new man, we use that anger to be to do something good for others. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands. That is, in his, the old man, we take from the society and take from other people. But in the new man, we are we labor and do good to others. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. You see very clearly old and new. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Everything that belongs to the old man, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Very clear. We are transformed and renewed when we, when we experience God's forgiveness, we forgive others. Therefore, be imitators of God and His beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. We cannot love other people if we have not received love from God. And we, we love, we're loved by God, then we can love. So therefore, walk. Go forth in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. We have experienced God, how we experience him. He has sacrificed for us, so we therefore sacrifice for others. For Jesus Christ is the answer for our, our problems and our questions. Jesus Christ is the secret. Jesus Christ has helped us to take us from the old man to the new man, and he helps us to be renewed in him continually. We will focus on Jesus Christ and Him alone. Heston Taylor, missionary, he was one who faced a lot of difficulties in his ministry. Many things he had to resolve immediately, and he was faced with so many things that uh, trialed his faith, and he had to face so many um, sadness and sorrows. His loved ones ill and died, and the, he had to face so many problems. But he always discovered something new that was precious in prayer, and he experienced victory. Uh, by waiting upon the Lord. He was very diligent. He would walk all day with his mission group. They would carry um, they would carry bags and tents, and at night they would come and set up the tents, and they would fall asleep. But he would stay awake and pray with the Lord. And the amazing thing is that he felt there was an emptiness in his spiritual life. And in God's grace, he received a letter from John McCarthy. And through this letter, he, God allowed him to see a vision about life in Christ. And this is what he learned, that Christ, when Christ is received, holiness starts. When Christ is exalted, holiness is uh, continued. 
and to focus on Christ, then holiness is complete. When we see Christ, holiness is initiated or started. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you start the process of becoming like Christ, renewed. And then you treasure Him, you cherish Him, you cherish Christ, you worship Him, you cherish Him, truly worship Him. Then you continue in the renewal of holiness. And at any time that you acknowledge that Jesus is with you, when you, your worship becomes natural, when you see that all is Jesus is present with you. That is, holiness is complete. We don't know when. Uh, we are always thinking of Christ. But that is the purpose, the goal that we want to attain, that we always um, exalt the Lord Jesus Christ and know His presence above us. Hudson Taylor also acknowledged that the holiest person is one who has Christ dwelling in and rejoices in the work that he has done that was completed on the cross. A life that is truly a life in Christ is that Christ lives in me. No longer I have to worry about anything, for I know that he has the power to accomplish his will, and his will it has been accomplished. We praise the Lord that from many ages before, before the creation, God has chosen us in Jesus Christ, and then Jesus Christ has shed his blood to redeem us, and now the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us to affirm that we belong to him and that we belong to the new man, and now we are transformed, renewed in Christ. This is the secret to follow Christ. We are in Christ. We worship and exalt Him and we will be transformed to be like Him. Let us stand up. Our Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for giving us a renewal in Jesus Christ. When we have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in us, Lord, help us to remember and follow your word, not just to listen and then forget, but we know that your word is so precious to us. Lord, thank you, for this is our life. Jesus, you are our life, and we live with you, and we want to be renewed like you, to be like you every day. We lift up our, our grateful heart and our worship in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.